Don Zavis and John Wechter, now on the Business Radio X Network, with the informative and get it done, speaking of sales. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Don Zavis, National Sales Trainer and Sales Coach. I want to welcome you to our inaugural uh, uh, podcast of Speaking of Sales. And uh, we're really looking forward to this. This is a great kickoff for the new year. Uh, something that we had planned on doing last year, but in lieu of the circumstances, got delayed. So thank you for being here. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of other things you can uh, uh, direct your time and effort towards and, uh, and really, really do appreciate that. Of course, always uh, flanked here by my partner in crime, Mr. John Wechter, the Professor, greetings, Mister Inauguration Day. <laughs> yeah, this is this is going to be interesting because this is uh, the first time we've ever had a chance to do this. So, uh, the the show itself is uh, going to be similar to other speaking of sales events that we do, uh, whether it be the the weekly conference call, uh, the live interview events, and such. But you know, podcast has become such an incredible medium nowadays, and it's getting so much attention in the marketplace that it only seemed natural to kind of move in that direction as well. And it also supports what I want to talk about today, which is the idea of being open, uh, be safe, but be open. You know, here we are on the uh, on the seventh of January. Seventh, right? Yeah, today's the seventh of January. And, uh, you know, obviously the pandemic continues to rage all around us. We've got lots of political upheaval that's taken place over the last couple of days. We're now coming into the new year, which historically is the, you know, kickoff for a, a lot of new budgets that people have, new business ideas, new business models, company inceptions. And a lot of that's not happening now. You're, 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 you're not really seeing that, you know, shotgun blast where everybody's kind of rushing out of the gate. So, you know, John and I wanted to maybe invest a little bit of time today to kind of have that mindset that, you know, really at some point in time, because obviously the pandemic is going to be with us, you're going to have to make the decision on what your future looks like. Sitting on the sidelines probably isn't going to be practical any longer. John, thoughts on that? Well, the reality of the situation when it came to, I mean, we've been covering this now for uh, eight, eight, nine months, Absolutely, you know, yeah. with our mm -hmm. with our, our 10 point mm -hmm. uh, package on how to how to uh, beat the coronavirus right. business side and all of our strategic planning stuff. And it's now it's time to reset your goals and all yep. that kind of stuff. So this is nothing new to us and Don Zavish sales training, right. but it is a new year. Yes. And it is time to rethink mm -hmm. everything that you're doing mm -hmm. and your customers that you've had all along. Uh, you have to retool up and yep. rethink all of them right. because they may not come back. That's and true. Um, and true. and if they don't come back, what are you going to do? What's your plan to a get mm -hmm. them back, mm -hmm. or b find new situations that you can delve into? And we've got plenty of examples here going forward. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, uh, but you have to be open. And I'll cover it tomorrow mm -hmm. in our session, yeah. or in our live session. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, Stanford and Northwestern just mm -hmm. did some research that said if you are in the hospitality or restaurant business, mm -hmm. for example. You can actually be at the, the the data shows that you can be at twenty percent capacity, and open, mm -hmm. and usually, if you're capitalized to a certain degree, you will be able to cash flow your way out of this mm -hmm. at twenty percent. Mm -hmm. There's no reason for regulatory bodies to shut you down, mm -hmm. and that's Stanford and Northwestern mm -hmm. in a combined study. Mm -hmm. So yes, be safe. Everything's socially distanced, mm -hmm. but. Be open. Mm -hmm. Do you think that just playing devil's advocate, do you think it's a situation where um, the, the pervasive fear is, is that, you know, if you're open, you're going to abuse it, right? Even, you know, you're, you're saying be open 20 percent, but, you know, we know entrepreneurs, we know business people, we, you know, we recognize the, the, the risk taking necessity in order to be successful in those environments. Do you think that, that, that the local governments have had to create this? You know, you're you're closed as opposed to letting you individually police yourself, for fear that you would just you would just take advantage of it. I'm sure uh, that's part of it, because there have been there have been businesses and individuals that have basically superseded whatever guidelines have come through, mm -hmm. in the um, in the um, spirit of commerce. Mm -hmm. um, however, the 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 major the majority of 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 you know good businesses out there they understand that they mm -hmm. don't want their customers getting sick mm -hmm. they don't want they want their customers back mm -hmm. and if they're tied through contact tracing or whatever thing mm -hmm. to a, a major outbreak of some sort mm -hmm. or 
uh, a significant cohort that's mm-hmm. uh, in the hospital. They don't want any of that. So sure. I say the, the 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 large majority of people are going to honor. Uh, uh, you know, as long as they're given the opportunity to survive, mm-hmm. as long as they're given the opportunity just to keep their name in the public mm-hmm. domain, I, I think most people will toe the line. Mm-hmm. You're always going to have your outliers. You, sure. you always will. Absolutely. You know, it, it's interesting. I think, you know, I, I'm a capitalist through and through. And I believe that capitalism works in every scenario. I believe that the the venues, restaurants, whatever, that that respect their clientele you know, respect the, the masks and social distancing and limiting the amount of people and hand washing and sanitizing. All I think that, that people would naturally gravitate towards the locations that they think really have their best interest. I think at the same time, if you had a, a restaurant that was open 100 percent, I think that the population would kind of just, again, shy away from that for fear that, you know, they're taking an unnecessary risk. You know, and that's why that the idea of be open, be safe. But be open is so pervasive because, you know, for the last 10, you know, 11 months, we've kind of sat on the sideline and, and, and almost no business can certainly survive on that. At some point in time, you're going to have to draw a line in the sand. I'm kind of encouraging it to be now and say, all right, imperfect though it may be, we got to be back in business, right? Whatever, whatever, whatever your pre-pandemic world looks like, you want to be as much like that as possible. Now, I understand the confines and there's lots of scenarios where you've got governmental intervention and, and, you, and you can't do it. And it's unfortunate that that's the case. That's a you know, story for another day. Elect new politicians. Again, story for another day. But you have to make this mental decision. It's, it's, a, it's a level of mental toughness to say, yes, it's going to be hard. That's why you're hearing. That's why we're doing a podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's interesting because. Uh, so many people ha- are doing just the opposite. They hear the message that we talk about that you may have to do twice as much even to keep where you were. So if you hypothetically in a, in a selling vernacular, if you made, you know, 20 prospecting calls a day, you may have to now make 40 just to have the same level of business. If you, you know, invested a thousand dollars a month in advertising, you might have to invest two thousand dollars a month now to be at the same place that you were previously. But, you know, anyone that's looking to kind of, you know, play whack-a-mole and keep their head down, they're really going to get whacked. The chances of you surviving this kind of holding out, you know, against hope that it's going to get better uh, of its own volition is it, pretty unlikely. And we see that. Um, we read that in the paper every day. Mm-hmm. You know, we just lost a, a very popular Greek restaurant today here in Tucson. Really? Yeah. And um, and Mark knows that very well. Um uh, it's the uh, Greek restaurant next to Walgreens on Speedway, Frominos or something like oh, that. Oh, Frominos. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And um, and and so I, I don't know I don't know what they did not do because mm-hmm. I don't know the business at all. Mm-hmm. But we're going to have to really look differently at things. The things mm-hmm. that uh, were um, you know non-essential previously mm-hmm. are might be essential today. Mm-hmm. The strategic plan portions that you would never consider last year you just mm-hmm. wouldn't do it oh absolutely um like 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 vertical integration mm-hmm. or some sort of other uh structural um uh you know characteristic of your organization you may now have to consider that and we were talking earlier today mm-hmm. with a, another gentleman who yeah. pointed out that um a restaurant here in town who used to buy their buy all their bread mm-hmm. is now making all their bread right and and so uh, you know a several hundred thousand dollar expense probably now with a little bit of an investment has probably cut that in half right. or maybe by a third mm-hmm. you know and th- that's a hundred or a hundred fifty thousand dollars that mm-hmm. that 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 organization figured out how to deal with mm-hmm. so we we have to we have to we have to stay safe and stay open, but we have to reopen our minds mm-hmm. as well, so that we, the things that we used to that used to be off the table, like right. that's not my strength, that's not what I'm exactly. going to do, sure. that's not me. It's not our market. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we're going to have to consider. Well, how do we make it our market? Sure, it is. It is now. I, I think that's interesting because, you know, in 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 every challenging environment. So certainly this is probably the most challenging most people have experienced in their lifetime. But you look in any challenging environment, you have that, 
you know, you have the, the winners and the losers. You have the the ones that have become stronger of it. I mean, you know, you look at the Amazons of the world that, and the DoorDashes and the Grubhubs that were, you know, they were, they've been around for years and years, uh, struggle to get traction. And, and now because of, you know, they've become the, the unwilling, you know, unwitting beneficiary of the pandemic. Now they've, you know, their, their businesses have increased, you know, exponentially because of what they've had. And on the flip side, there's other businesses that obviously, as you just mentioned, have suffered to the point of, of no longer being viable. And, and that's, and that's you know, that's disappointing. And, I, and again, I go back to what we said originally. I think that there's that mental toughness that you're going to have to decide, I'm back in business. Whatever that back in business looks like, whatever we have to do. And, and I know we talk a lot about restaurants. They seem to be the the focal point of the air ire of, of, of every politician, close the restaurants, you know, close the churches, you know, right. leave the bars open, you know, right. you know, leave Costco open, you know, here's all the other places you can go. Right. You, you know, don't, you can't go into a park, you know, I, you know, there are certain ski runs that were, you know, they've closed off and I'm thinking to myself, you know, people naturally wear a mask virtually every time I've seen them skiing, whether it's a helmet, it's a face shield or something. I mean, just because of the cold, you would think those are the people that you'd really want to support because they are already well, well ahead of us in the mask world. And yet, you know, they're being closed down now. You know, it could be just the natural reactionary, overreactionary premise that they have. But, you know, if you allow this to take place and you just kind of say, OK, I'm going to try to sit it out. You really can't. You have to be open clearly within the confines of what you could. People are investing in in technology and websites and, and an online presence where they legitimately should have had those before, right? right. So I, I think that they you know, they may be were short sighted, not recognizing the the value of of an online presence. Now they're forced to do it, and now they're behind the eight ball. And unfortunately, at the time, in many cases, when they can least afford it, they're now facing having to do it. And because it's hurried and it's rushed, it's really not that comprehensive. It's not effective, uh, and then and not surprisingly, they don't get really good results. So that creates that doom loop, which makes the situation worse and worse and worse and, you know, continues to go down. But again, you have to fight against this. And the and I don't want to create the perception for the people listening that I'm saying you're not. There's a lot of people out there that are fighting diligently. I mean, every day you hear a lawsuit by this, you know, the local gym or, you know, some kind of, you know, the bakery or something like that, that is just at their wits end and they're looking for a legal remedy and whether or not that ever pans out for them. I really applaud them that they're trying. You know, yeah. they, here's a person that's just not idly sitting by and allowing their life savings and their like work just to be destroyed when the very politicians, unfortunately, that are destroying it don't have never missed a paycheck. Well, I think uh, I one of the problems that I see is that so many businesses are just doing nothing except crying foul. I agree. They're just raising their hand and they're dialing their lawyer and they're investing their money into uh, a legal uh, battle mm -hmm. that they should be they should be uh, reinvesting in their business with that with that money because um, most businesses of any certain size or sophistication mm -hmm. they have a SWOT analysis mm -hmm. they understand their strengths their weaknesses mm -hmm. and they understand the T and the O the threats and the mm -hmm. opportunities mm -hmm. and and they've made. They're, they've structured their business historically based upon their own uh, situation. Um, it's time now for every business to re-enact that mm -hmm. exercise mm -hmm. because in a pandemic and going forward, we've got a new administration. Mm -hmm. We've got a new set of, of leaders mm -hmm. uh, that you can cry foul all you want mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. but that's just that's not going to get your kid in college. You know, and so, you know, start being real mm -hmm. and start let's let's relook. And that's something that we do as part of Don Zavis sales training. Mm -hmm. We we will help you with analyzing all your strengths and weaknesses, your opportunities and your threats. Mm -hmm. And guess what? A year ago, how many businesses in this in this city, uh, state world mm -hmm. um said, Oh, one of my threats is a pandemic virus called corona. Mm -hmm. You know, no, you, you, nobody. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't so, even on a radar. So you can't, you can't really get, you can't right. really get them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can't mm -hmm. really nail it a hundred percent. 
but you 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 can get better at it. Mm -hmm. You can increase your your uh, probabilities for a successful mm -hmm. outcome mm -hmm. by rethinking your entire mm -hmm. uh, your entire mission, your entire vision, mm -hmm. and 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 re reengaging new strategies with new opportunities. And um, it's there. Mm -hmm. It can be done. Mm -hmm. There are there are many many businesses doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, but in order to do it. You got to be open, mm -hmm. and you got to stay safe. And and I, and I and I'll go back to uh, to piggyback on that. The mental toughness. You know, I was doing a coaching session last week, and you know, it, this the person I was speaking with really was at a level of despair that I had not seen that person, and literally, almost on the brink of tears, he he kind of tried to sum it up and say, you know, it's just not fair. And and I remember thinking to myself as a coach and a trainer, there's a couple ways I can go. I can be the empathetic and, and sympathetic. Or I can be, you know, the high school football coach that says, you know, go out there and do it. And I and I and I kind of went football coach way and I said, You mean to tell me life's not fair? Right? And and just with that one comment, he it made sense to them that you're right, it's it's not fair, but it is the circumstance. And and you will make a decision that you're drawing your line in the sand and saying, I am in business and whatever it takes. Now, you know, that might be putting yourself in debt beyond your wildest dreams. That might be you know, investing in technology or, or podcasts, right? Things that you didn't do before that th the evidence is overwhelming you would benefit from. Bringing on and a partner. Bringing on a partner, sure. You know, in, in the case of us, you know, and, and I'll put a shameless plug in for ourselves. We actually are restarting our live sessions uh, tomorrow at, at 1030 at the Tucson Mall. And it's interesting because the last session that we did live at anywhere was at our Tucson Mall location. And uh, it was March 17th, I believe. Uh, and that was it. I mean, literally, it has been, you know, a couple months shy of a year. Now, we've continued to do our Friday session, and we've continued to do it on Zoom, as we have for the last, excuse me, going back to 2016, in the spring of 2016. So that part continuum has stayed. Most of our clients aren't even in Tucson. So they really haven't seen that much of a change in the relationship. It was always right. Zoom, telephone, Skype, you know, those kind of things. And then a couple times a year, I would jump on a plane and go visit them. But the, the decision was made by us, certainly, and I, I always use ours, you know, I'm, I'm a product of the product. I would never encourage my clients to do something that I wouldn't do myself, which was we need to be back. Either, and, you know, I, I will, you know, reach out to the very people who back looked like previously, but if mm -hmm. they're not ready to go, we're going. It's going right. to be somewhere else with somebody else in a safe, appropriate way, not irresponsible, not not frivolous but we're going to be open. We're going to do the live sessions. We're going to do them properly. We're going to do them safely, but we're going to be open. That's because that's a hallmark of us in the case of Don's Davis sales training being in business. That's kind of a hallmark. It's the people that continue to drive things towards zooms, you know, and I, and I had one guy tell me, you know, that the zoom is the bastard stepchild of, you know, face to face meetings. And, you know, maybe I'm not quite as critical of it as that, but, Clearly, the Zoom is less than, you know, it'd be like if you were dating somebody, you know, you wouldn't want to go on a Zoom date, right? I mean, you, you know, the, the, the purpose would, would be you'd want to be face-to-face -face as much as possible. I view Zoom as the underground tunnel of a new li for a new life. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry about that. I started, I started to laugh while I was surfing. Well, it is. You know, it is. And, and the interesting thing about it, again, with no criticism, this is an observation by, a, you know, what I like to believe is a trained selling observer, is that it's really kind of, it's really uncovered a lot of the imposters, I guess, for lack of a better word, that are in the marketplace. You know, because when, when the economy is good, it's that adage of the rising tide raises all ships. So when sales are strong, when the economy is good, even the mediocre Right. Salespeople, you know, do well. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, yep. when things get a little bit more challenging now, you know, now the, 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 you know, the mediocre people are now laid bare. It's obvious that, you know, of what they are, the successful people now, instead of, like you said, go back to the mental toughness, they're out doing it. Right. They've right. got families, they've got children, they've got, you know, uh, goals and whatever it takes. So, you know, if that means I got to work, you know, 10 hours a day as opposed to eight, I'm going to do it. If I got to work Saturday and Sunday, I'm going to do it. It's, you know, if I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go and mortgage my house now so I can do more advertising, you know, as much of a risk as that sounds on paper, the reality is it's always been a risk. 
Right. Even in the best of circumstances, there's no guarantee your business day to day to day to day. The fact that you know you had a client yesterday is no guarantee you're going to have them tomorrow. And I'm amazed at how many people fear what they've lost because they have no mechanism to either keep them or get more. Right. It's like when they're lost, they're lost. They're never coming back, and then they're they're lost forever. And you know, and again, as much sadness and challenges there is in the marketplace, there's the the gumption that people have that says, "Okay, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to sit idly by. I'm going to take whatever risks are necessary. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to be open, whatever open looks like." Well, there there are there are times when you do have to really absorb and and understand the warrior mentality when it mm -hmm. comes to competition. Absolutely. And so, uh, and we've talked about it in the past, mm -hmm. you know, how do we become closer, if not closer, 100% to that apex predator? Sure. Uh, top of the industry, top of top of your but local. You look at the Amazons or, you know, Costco's and, and the major players, they, they all seem to be thriving. They are. Right? Where you would think they would, you know, having the biggest payrolls, you know, the biggest blockchains, I mean, the, you know, they should be the target that actually collapses. And and yet they're posting enormous gains. You know how yeah. is that even possible? And they're 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 doing it with additional services. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you walk into a Costco, for example, mm -hmm. you see more stands than ever yeah. in terms of yep. third parties that they have partnered yep. that they have partnered with. Mm -hmm. So when they make money, uh, uh, when the when the vendor makes money, mm -hmm. Costco makes money. Absolutely. So they're doing that very yep. very well, and mm -hmm. so they're starting new services. As are we. Yep. You know, Absolutely. we've started uh, new services in the behavioral assessment category mm -hmm. and strategic planning and assessments. Mm -hmm. We've done this. We do SWOT analysis mm -hmm. now for, for people. Mm -hmm. We also do executive placement, mm -hmm. uh, hiring, uh, hiring, coaching, mm -hmm. resume writing, yep. all that stuff that we didn't really um, we could always do. Mm -hmm. But we didn't really promote too much in right. previous mm -hmm. in previous uh, years. Uh, but now we've got to start making that a little more sure. of a. Uh, of a of a of an anchor point for us, so that we can spread out and not, um, you know, and reduce the risk of our previous model. Yeah, no, and I couldn't agree more. And I think that when you look at again the success, you look at Uber. You know, it, as soon as they, you know, the bottom fell kind of out on people traveling, which you know just plummeted U Uber revenue. They some very smart person said, well, you know, if we can deliver people, we can deliver Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yep. And the whole Uber Eats, which now, as I understand it, actually is a more of a revenue stream than the actual physical moving of bodies related to Uber. Yep. And so there have been so many players, again, but that comes out of that mental toughness. That comes out of the idea like, we're here, we're not going anywhere, we're not going to you know, hide our head in the stand, we're not going to, you know, again, you know, being safe, I, you know, that, that's important. I want to make sure I kind of touch base on that because it can seem very, um, you know, militant in its approach. I'm not saying that it's not serious. What I am saying is, is that I think that you can cautiously, right, and safely function in a way that benefits you, your staff, your company, your personal goals, as well as your clients. You know, the clients that, that we deal with are, are hungry for revenue improvement, right? And this is such a great way to deliver those skills in a live situation that really you can certainly do it online. You can do it in Zoom. And, and in many cases, you don't have much loss in it. But, you know, it's like a concert, right? I guess you could, you know, listen to the album and it's going to sound perfect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely perfect. But you want to go to the concert because, you know, I hate to say it, but you want to hear the imperfections. You want to, yeah. you know, hear the difference. You want to see, you know, your your idols perform those types of things. That You're never going to replace that idea of the of, of the of the live distribution method completely in lieu of some digital medium that goes along with it. But again, Correct. you know, you look at that, you look at all entertainment industries, right? There is that mental toughness. There's going to be one artist, whoever it's going to be, it's going to be the first guy that says, we're going out, right? We're, we're not going to play to, you know, 50,000 people. We're going to play to 5,000 that are 10 feet apart. Yep. Right. And we're going to have them come in, you know, different doors and we're going to we're going to figure out how to do it. And imperfect though it may be, we're going to do it right. We're going to make it happen. We're going to be open. We're going to be safe. Right. We're going to be open. We're going to do whatever it takes, however it takes to go out and make these things happen. And everybody's watching the NFL because they are they are basically trailblazing on how to get that done. Well, they are. And I think that's a perfect example of necessity. 
You know, it's interesting when, when, you know, you hear studies and you hear on the news and television and sports commentators that talk about the, you know, billions of dollars that are lost by the seasons that we've had. We've had limited amounts of games and, you know, realize every game that you don't have, you know, just think about concessions. You know, when, when, when I go with my family and you buy the normal things, you know, peanuts and hot dogs and a couple beers and Cokes and, you know, ice cream and just all the stuff that normally goes in with a game, you know, you've got a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars. Well, that's just the Zavis family. Imagine right. now that it's the Zavis family and the Wechter family and the Bishop family and now all the other families. You know, you're talking an enormous amount of money. So I think they're 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 being forced into this due to the pure economics. Mm -hmm. But regardless of the reason, whether they, they do it because they economic, they do it because they've decided now's the time. I, I applaud the fact they're doing it. It would have been very easy to say we're just done. Right. right. We're just no season at all. And, you know, you know, the hit would have been monumental financially. And, you know, is this perfect? No, it's imperfect. But, you know, we're imperfect people in an imperfect world. It's OK to move forward, imperfect though it may be, but yet moving forward. Very true. So it, it'll be interesting to see what what happens. I, you know, hear tell that some of the stadiums are allowing, you know, 5000 people to go back where maybe they would normally have 40,000. You know, again, is it perfect? No. But it's what's available at the time when the counter to that is nothing, right? Everybody's gone. Nobody works. You know, all the concession stand people, the ripple effect is just really become monumental. And yeah. I understand that, you know, and, I'm, and I've said this before in session. So, you know, I'm, I'm devoutly Catholic and I believe that one death is one too many. But, you know, I, I, the, 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 the circle, the universe of problems generated by being closed and you start looking at, you know, and, and I don't really think that they've ever accurately brought up the, you know, the terrible things like the suicide rates and spousal abuse and drug addiction and alcoholism and all these. Just mental illness increases in, in general. Absolutely have just kind of spiked in this situation. And that's that that's that, you know, dark, you know, dark area. Nobody wants it. They know it's there. Right. Mm -hmm. And they know that it's bad, but nobody really wants to talk about it, because if you really talked about it and you really knew how bad it was, you know, you, 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 would, you would just be floored by that. You're live streaming Tucson Business Radio X. Meet interesting and informative people that share their hard times and successes throughout their business careers. So I have a couple suggestions on, on, on the being back. Let me let me run past you. So we as John mentioned earlier, we did a session which was kind of the, the 10 steps to survive the coronavirus. And, and we talked about some of the, the obvious and logical ones, certainly, you know, beefing up your capacity for technology and, you know, utilizing all the resources that you have. But one of the one, you know, one of the things that I like to do is kind of that de-engineering scenario and, and timelines. I believe that that which is not measured is not done. So what that means, for example, if your goal is to be fully open in one year. So whatever that means. So we'll use it. We'll use restaurant X as an example, has a hundred tables. If your goal is to be fully open by this time in 2022, right? What would you have to do now, in, you know, today, literally this moment, it, by de-engineering it back to say, this is what's going to happen in 2022. So if that means that you're going to have you know, 50 employees at, you know, on the 7th of January in 2022, and you have 10 now, well, how many would you need next week to course towards that? What would you have to do in terms of your menu? What would you have to do that in terms of people coming in, right? Whether it's a carry out, whether it's a dine in, you know, I love the restaurants that, you know, built these outdoor little, little huts, right? And mm -hmm. put, put supplemental heating in there. Again, you know, were they happy about doing it? No, there was a you know, significant investment that they never wanted to make. And yet those are the people that are going. So if you wanted to go to a restaurant, you're going to go to the one that's actually available. And going back to capitalism, when you see the person that's built these outside things separately heated and just your group and your party, you're going to drive cross town to go to that one because you have the perception that it has increased safety. Therefore, now his, his gambit actually paid off. Right. Capitalism works 100 percent of the time. So that's one of the ideas that we're talking about is, is you know, what are you actually going to do? And, and I believe and, and continue to believe that it's that mental toughness. Right. It's you deciding first and foremost that we're not giving up. We're not we're not going down in flames. We're not going to continue to put our head in the sand again, recognizing that safety has to be first. But there's so many people that are doing nothing. 
Exactly. All right. And, and using the, you know, the, the cloak of, of the pandemic. And it's interesting. I, I, we have a client, I won't mention names because they might quite possibly be listening at some point. And in the course of conversation, she actually said her staying home is a raise. She actually kind of got a raise by staying home, and, and I and I thought that was interesting. And I know I, people like that too. Yeah, and and I and I kind of I don't want to say pressed her, but I continued that line of questioning. I said, "Well, can we share with me what that is," and she said, "Well, normally I would spend forty dollars a week for gas, right? That's just driving back and forth to work. Now I don't know what kind of car they have, and I don't know what forty dollars means in terms of how much gas is being used, but forty dollars was the dollar value. That doesn't happen anymore, right? She doesn't pay for childcare." which has got to be hundreds, I would imagine, at More least. More than gas. More than gas, absolutely, sure. Now, uh, you know, uh, you're not buying the $5 Starbucks on the way. You're not having $25 a week for dry cleaning. You know, on top of the fact that it was a 35-minute drive for her both ways. So that meant every single day, an hour and 10 minutes is lost. You know, it doesn't benefit the, the employer. It certainly doesn't benefit her. It doesn't benefit her family. It's just lost. So in her mind not going to work, right? Now, I'm not saying she's not working, but I'm saying not going to work yeah. is an absolute windfall. Yes, it a is. And now because of the circumstances, and again, I, I'm not saying you shouldn't be cautious, but I think in her mind, the, the, the risk of the pandemic has now been elevated, right? Because going back now is, is so disincentivized, right? right. There, 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 there's no incentive to go back. In fact, going back now is going to be you know, hugely negative for her in terms of the dollar values that, that she's going to have to encompass. And I'm wondering how many other people, we have school systems that are out, and I have a teacher associate of mine said that we can't even fail anybody this year. Yeah, We can't, and I don't know what they're going to do. I got to imagine they're going to do something. But he goes, you know, we live in an area where there are some financial challenges for some of the families. And although in, in my world, having internet at home is just, you know, it's like running water, right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of places that, that people don't have internet. They don't have cable. So you, you can't get the online classes, but how do you penalize the kid for their parents' inability to have it? And, and even though, yes, there are some you know community places to go, you're not going to take your six-year-old to the you know local community center and just drop him off right. for him to be at school all day. So now you have a generation that because they weren't open, they were essentially lost. Right. And I mean, that's 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 shameful. And I, and I don't say that I have a solution, but I think that we I think that recognizing the problem really kind of promotes this idea that, you know what, you can follow the science. The science says that kids are kind of unaffected with this, not that they don't get it and potentially bring it home. But now we've got vaccines and we have all these things. We should be talking openly and honestly about something, you know, five percent a week. Right. So, you know, we have 20 percent of the kids come back, you know, maybe the. You know, maybe the younger ones where child care is more of an issue so the parents can go back. Uh, Tucson Medical Center sent out a letter to the local school districts and said, you got to go back to school. Mm -hmm. You know, our doctors and nurses and, and critical medical people can't come back to work because their children can't just be left alone. For them, school, unfortunately, is child care. And, and even the child care facilities that they could potentially go into in lieu of school aren't available either. So right. now you've got this, you know, again, this generational thing where everyone's out and everything has just got this giant question mark. So even in your world, you know, a 5% per week or 5% per month, but something that represents growth, something that represents we're open, imperfect though it may be, and we're moving forward. Every week we're going to do more. We're going to do 5% more. We're going to, you know, try to position it that way and we're going to invest even though we don't. That's a scary word for a lot of people right now. It is. Even, you know, we're going to have to invest. We're going to have to take the risk. There, There is no, there's no sustainability in waiting this out. Well, guess what? The the uh, Going back to the restaurant example that you gave, the person that did invest in that outdoor courtyard, mm -hmm. that did throw in the yep. heat, and they got new customers because of it. Absolutely. And they're going to retain mm -hmm. those customers. Absolutely. And so, you know... It may have just been um, a dollars and cents decision in previous years mm -hmm. that 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 caused that decision to not do that upgrade, mm -hmm. but because of the pandemic, they oh, were they were forced to do that absolutely. upgrade. And guess what? Their business mm -hmm. is going to is going to come mm -hmm. to life much faster. Yes, 
because as soon as it's just a hint mm -hmm. uh, uh, into, into the cold season, mm -hmm. and as it comes out where it's beautiful to sit yep. outside again, yep. Heat or no heat, mm -hmm. they're going to get the business. Absolutely, sure. They may have wonderful food, and that person across town may have not made the thirty-minute trip to go there. Now they will, right? right? And exactly. they would have, they would have never experienced. So that's that pivot idea. That's that. You know, you go back to that apex predator methodology that says there is enormous opportunities for those that are willing to risk taking it. Exactly. Right. For the people that aren't willing to risk taking it. For the people that, you know, never stepped up their carryouts. And you know, it's you, you see this a lot of places. These gyms and fitness places and we have a, a client that's a yoga teacher and you know she was doing stuff in the park and the interesting thing about it was she said her clients love it right i mean the, the very the, you know the very pivot that you are taking which is perceived to be most most undesirable is in fact what now they want and there's probably a very good chance that in the future even when everything goes back they'll continue to do some version of that right in the park in the park exactly so so it's kind of a it's a it's a dichotomy because you know, many of the things that we're being deferred to, you know, people doing things on Zoom, for example, right? right? You know, there was talk five years ago where they said Skype and Zoom and these online, I think uh, Google has an online meeting, Microsoft has a version of an online Teams, meeting. Yeah. yeah, four or five years ago, they were talking about how this was going to make business travel obsolete because now you didn't need to take people from all over the world and fly them to a place. They can all just jump on. And they can all look at each other and facial features and, all, you know, facial expressions, and they can have these conversations. And yet what people are telling me is they can't wait to travel again. Yeah. You know, business owners, it says, you know, I can't wait until they have the XYZ convention, even though there's a, a significant dollar value attached to the going of it and the travel and the, you know. It's interesting how cyclical this is, because the last economic downturn uh, when we were starting to come out of it, mm -hmm. there was an interesting United Airlines commercial where the where the boss of a company mm -hmm. came into a conference room of of salespeople mm -hmm. and um, just started throwing the airline tickets right, right. right at yep. each one of them yep. and just said it's time to go back out and shake hands. Absolutely, sure. There, there's no substitute for that. I mean, you know, again, we're social creatures, and and but I. But that think was uh, 15, 10, 15 years ago. Well, I and it probably happened 10, 15 years ago. I, I was just going to say that. that. I was just going to say that. You know, for those that have been around and kind of adult long enough to be in the 2008, 2009, when you had this enormous financial fallout, I mean, to the point where very smart people were like, this is going to be the end of, you know, this is literally, we're teetering on the brink of, you know, brink of, you know, of, of, of catastrophe, right? I mean, absolutely. I mean, it was, it was, I think if people realized how legitimately close we were, I think that would scare everyone, you know, and, and maybe that's the reason that we, we don't hear about it. Uh, and, and then years before that, we had Black Monday, you know, back in, and, and there was, a, you know, huge Wall Street fallout. And years before that, there was the, refre you know, the recession of 72. And I mean, you go back in these every 10 years. Now, I don't think there's been anything quite like this. I think this is kind of anomalous unless you go back 100 years to the, you know, the last pandemic that was really pretty much worldwide. Mm -hmm. That was really the the, the most similar scenario that came into place. But during that time, we've gone through multiple world wars. You know, we've gone through multiple situations. Again, these wars involve the world, right? Now, although they weren't fighting in your backyard and maybe your neighbor didn't die during World War II, you know, and, and it was taking place someplace else on the planet, you know, you look at the loss of life, it was enormous. And, and, and even despite the fact that there was enormous worldwide global consequences to our potential loss, nobody stopped. Exactly. You know, it would have been very easy to stop. And again, I'm not I'm not being saying be flippant again, be open, be safe. But it's that mental toughness. And I'm going to continue to say that because these people that are, you know, there's a line that we have that we talk about people that are unwilling to invest in themselves. And it's kind of a cute play on words, and it's they're sitting on their biscuit not wanting to risk it. Right. <laughs> right? Right? And, and the problem becomes is that, you know, what do they say? You know, you can't find new worlds in unless you leave the site of shore. And that's really hard. When you're, when you're afraid, the last thing you want to do is give up what little you have, even though in reality, you know you need to do that. You, you need to, you know, what you have is not going to carry you. You have to hope that, you know, and hope isn't a selling strategy, 
But you have to be able to have confidence that if I do the right things, I have enough confidence in myself. I, I see people that elect to not take sales training. And I've had people actually say, I wouldn't waste my money on myself. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, I would never come to class and I would never do the things you tell me. I don't want to waste my money. Now, you know, part of me thinks, oh, my God, what a, what a sad commentary. Yes. The other part of me says, wow, that guy really knows himself. Right. Not that he's ever going to be successful. And it's God, his God given right to be miserable and unhappy. And I'm totally cool with that. But, you know, there, there's so much on the line right now for our clients. And they're getting a steady message that it is going to be hard. Right. There's nothing about this is going to be easy. Is it overcomable? Yes. But it's going to take a monumental effort. And for those that are willing to put it in, there's going to be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. For those, however, that want to play it safe, take no risk don't want to do anything. They're going to hope every day it gets better. They're going to, you know, do, you know, do a lot of stuff that's little or no cost. And not surprisingly, that's where everybody is, right? I mean, now I think that the the traffic on the LinkedIn's and Facebook in terms of selling things have gone up 50 times where they were, right? Because it's no cost. You can put a little post on for yourself and feel like you're doing something. It's really not going to be effective. Nobody's really going to respond, but it feels like you're doing something. Whereas there are other options that there are a dollar value attached to them you should be doing, and yet they you know choose not to. You have to start questioning your own mind because the way you think is the way is is just a function of all of your previous experiences mm -hmm. where cause and effect mm -hmm. made some sense. Yep. Now cause and effect doesn't make any sense. Sure. For instance, mm -hmm. we just had a an incredible confusing day yesterday yeah. on the on the, the political scene of the yeah. capital. And today the Dow's up 211 points yes. and the S&P's up 55. Yeah. Uh, surprising, right? You know, surprising. Mm -hmm. The cause and effect relationships are going to be changing. Mm -hmm. And so um, you can't let yourself, you can't let your mind jump to traditional conclusions mm -hmm. in a non-traditional circumstance. Mm -hmm. So you just got to, you got to go back to your network mm -hmm. You got to figure out what everybody's thinking. Yes. You got to get ideas of all the people you've trusted in the past and maybe look at look at some new ideas, some new uh, some new participants in your network mm -hmm. uh, that are maybe a little avant garde thinkers or right. a little out of the box uh, to be not to be uh, cliche. But um, but that's what it, that's what has to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. the thinking uh, has got to change, not from a negative not not because it's fundamentally wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just fundamentally different. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I, you know, it's interesting. I and I and I get. I feel like a, you know, a broken record coming back and saying the same thing. But I, it really represents where you have to be. You are going to have to do more. You you know you may have to do twice. As, you might have to spend twice as much. You, you know that. And, and again, you have one hundred. At least in the things you do, you have a hundred percent control on that. You can never control who buys. You know, we often, you know, you can't arm wrestle somebody to the ground and force them to sign the dotted line. But you have 100% control of the things that you do. And I'm telling people, call, right? You know, you, you know, most people are, you know, they're so in tune with send a text or send an email. A call is mm -hmm. still, you know, only second, second good to face-to-face. -to -face. So if I can't have a face-to-face, -face, I'm going to have a call. And in that socialization, that making contact with people, it's interesting when you go back a year or two and, and in coaching sessions and we would talk about goals and all the things these people should be doing. And what I heard a lot was, well, I'm too busy, right? I'm too busy. I'm doing this. I'm traveling all over the place. I'm too busy to do all these things, right? Well, now you've been kind of given the gift of time and yet they're still not doing it. Now there's just another excuse that comes in, comes into the fray, right? Whether you wanted to write the great American novel or, you know, you, you now in the case of, of the woman who's my client, you now have an hour and 10 minutes every single day that you didn't have before. Right. Almost like you, you've been gifted. Now, whether you walk your dog, hug your kids, make dinner, I don't care, make a, it doesn't make any, you now have an hour that you didn't have. That's gold. Right? It, it, it is, but there's only 16 of those in the day. Well, exactly. But, you know, but most people don't think of that. They, they, they don't see it in terms of what they've got. And everything is terms of what they've lost. And again, you know, if you're sick or you have family members that are sick or, you know, God forbid, passed away. Yes, you're going to have a different perspective on it. But the interesting thing about it is that, you know, when you when you look at how mankind has has responded to 
you know, I, I never realized, you know, hepatitis, right? Hepatitis is a deadly disease. A huge percentage of the population has it, even more so than the percentages of COVID, right? And yet the world doesn't shut down back in the 70s and 80s when AIDS came out and it was, you know, it was an absolute death sentence. There was no treatment. People really didn't know how it got around. And, and you would have thought in that scenario, the first thought would have been lockdown, right? Everyone just kind of retreat to their corners until we figure out what the hell's going on. And yet, you know, the 70s and 80s were a time of enormous growth in the United States. Why, you know, why is that? That should have been the time. You know, it's that intestinal fortitude. It's that, mm -hmm. it's that mental toughness. It's the idea that you're going to get through this. You either will be a casualty of it, right? Or you'll be an unwilling, you know, unwitting beneficiary of it, but you get to choose. You know, so if you had to pick one, like, if you know, mine has always been that you're going to have to put in twice as much. You're going to have to do twice as much. You might have to spend twice as much. You might, you know, if you're doing, the example I like to use is if you're doing 20 cold calls, you might have to do 40 or God forbid, do 60. You got to, you know, instead of starting work, you know, whenever you get up, you set your alarm for six. And, and when that eight o'clock bell goes off, you're, you know, you hit the ground running like a gunshot. What would you tell people? If you had to pick that one slogan to put on the, you know, put on the bumper sticker. It's time to reevaluate your business model. Interesting. Uh, just, just to see, you know, the things that you discounted in the past may have to be reconsidered. Do you think most people know what their business model is? Do you think it was, they was actually, they sat down and, and thought about it and said, okay, this is the way I'm going to construct my business. Or do you think it just kind of happens organically and then they just kind of keep going whether it works or not? Absolutely the latter. Okay. Nobody thinks in terms of business models, but yeah. it's time to, it's time to start mm -hmm. if you, ha if you have it, because right. um, a business model is nothing more than, than, than a, a, a you know, a, a, a name, an identifier on, on how revenue comes in. Mm -hmm. Where, where's your revenue sources come from? Right. How are you you're, you're just going to have to rethink that mm -hmm. and, and acknowledge the fact that, you know, things have changed mm -hmm. and I may have to find uh, alternative forms of revenue mm -hmm. uh, to keep my business afloat. Mm -hmm. And that would be uh, one of the things that I first profess is just to is just to let's sit down and rethink this, not under pressure, but under your proverbial tree. Mm -hmm. You yeah. Know. Well, no. I. Yeah. And the tree that he's referring to, by the way, just for, just for those that may not, when you when you say the proverbial tree, you know, one of the techniques that we talk about is at least two times a year, uh, and it was really modeled after a Native American program was that you would go to some place that's oh that's relatively quiet, and you can be you know somewhat undistracted, bring a bunch of legal pads and you know a dozen sharpened pencils, and just let your ideas flow. In the absence of the minutia of the day, right, all the calls and emails and in the absence of all that stuff, you now have that freedom to think. And I believe that everyone is incredibly creative. That's why, you know, you go back to the 70s and a lot of the um, musicians that experimented with drugs. Right. And, and, and because of that experimentation came out with uh, amazing pieces of music that by their own justification, they would never have been able to create without that. Right. right. And it's that freedom of thought, that that ability to say, OK, you know, again, removing the minutia of the day. So when you make reference to sitting under a big tree, that's that's kind of what it is. But it's interesting how many people don't really know their, you know, when you say business model. Now, they they create one by de facto. They may not know what it is and may not know how it is, but they got one. You know, right. whether they kind of inherited it, whether they know what it is or don't know what it is, they got it. And and they yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, but now is the time to bring some structure to mm -hmm. some structure to the whole thought process. Yep. How did this thing come about? Mm -hmm. You know what what luck did I have? What good decisions did I have? That's true. You know mm -hmm. what what uh, uh, very importantly, what kind of a team got mm -hmm. me here? Yep. In terms of uh, uh, my employee base or my leadership team, mm -hmm. and so all of that's got to be reevaluated mm -hmm. uh, uh, in 2021. The sooner the better mm -hmm. to make sure that. That um, because, you know, the people that are going to come out of this, uh, for lack of a better word, unscathed, probably nobody mm -hmm. totally unscathed. But the but the ones that are going to come out as the beneficiaries at the end of the day, mm -hmm. they're going to be the ones that made those adjustments, right. that made the, that did that intelligent thinking mm -hmm. that looked, I mean, they really looked themselves in the 
in the mirror and took the hard course and understood that, you know, this isn't going to be easy, mm -hmm. but, um, but they took advantage of the fact that many people aren't going to do it at all. Sure. Many of their competitors aren't going right. to do it. Right. And if they stay the course mm -hmm. and if they make the changes they need to make, guess what? They're going to come out mm -hmm. uh, this thing. Uh, unfortunately, fortunately or unfortunately, mm -hmm. um, at the uh, at the demise of others, mm -hmm. uh, but at least they're going to be able to demonstrate to their family and friends and their community that um, that 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 we're here for you and your future. Right. I think you know as we close up today's podcast, and uh, you know there's a line that comes to mind which is very much mirrors what you just said, and, and I actually have it written in 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 my home and, and at various workplaces that I will do today what others will not so I can live tomorrow as others cannot. And, and you know, those words have always rung true to me because I, I will try to do the extra mile. I will try to do, and I don't got to do 100% better than everybody else. I just have to do a little bit better than everyone else. So, you know, for the people that are listening, I, I do wish you health. I certainly wish you happiness. Uh, John and I are a wonderful resource. So if you ever have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me directly at any one of a variety of phone numbers. Uh, certainly my email address, donzavis at comcast.net. And that one goes directly to me. John, you want to maybe yeah. share with yours? And my and mine is uh, jwector at comcast.net as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and my phone number is 520-370-8232. Mm -hmm. And please, if you've got any questions or, or you just, you just want to talk, our phones are open, our yeah. Zoom is open, yeah. and guess what? If we can find a restaurant that's open, maybe a good coffee or two uh, will we'll, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be on, on, on the docket. Absolutely. Coffee will be on me. So I, I appreciate you joining us. Thank you most, so much for joining us for our first inaugural uh, Speaking of Sales podcast. Uh, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, wish you good selling. Thank you. Are they good or what? Speaking of Sales with Don Zavis and John Wechter. Continuous on Tucson Business Radio X and heard on popular podcast platforms.